This is simply uh, the entire alphabet and it's done in different uh, rows and some of the, what's the vowels that are colored. The reason I do this is that it's kind of like Greek is following English. Now, of course, Greek's not following English, but it's kind of like, from our standpoint, the, the Greek alphabet follows the English alphabet for a while, and then it goes off, and there's a couple of other odd letters, and then it comes back and it follows it again. And so it's helpful to see it in these columns. So let's just kind of slowly walk through uh, this chart. Here are the first five and uh, the alpha, and be sure you say these words out loud with me. Uh, if you're in a place where you can't speak out loud, you need to go somewhere else, uh, but you need to do this uh, verbally. Uh, the first letter is the alpha. It's pronounced like the A in father, so say alpha. Second letter is beta. It's like the B in Bible, beta. There's no C in Greek, and so we go to the G sound, which is gamma. It's a hard G sound, gamma, like the G in gone. Now, there's kind of an odd situation here that if you get two gammas in a row, the first gamma is pronounced as an N. It's called a gamma nasal. And there's a few other combinations of gamma and other letters that do the same thing. But the main one we do is, that we point out, is the gamma gamma combination. Think of the English word angel, A-N-G, right? Well, in Greek, it's alpha, gamma, gamma. So that first gamma gets moved into an N sound, gamma nasal. So gamma by itself is always a G sound. Gamma, gamma, the first gamma is an N sound. So it's alpha, beta, gamma, and then you get to delta, the D sound, D is in dog, and then the epsilon, which is the short E sound like the E in met. So here's the first part of the alphabet chart, just the first column, and read it with me out loud. It's alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. The alpha and the epsilon are colored in the charts because those are vowels, and I'm trying to point that out. And by the way, I should point out as well that there is some difference of opinion on how the Greek letters are pronounced, especially the vowels. And I use what I call standard pronunciation. Uh, it's what we've used for a long, long time. There's a lot of discussion going on in the academy exactly how these vowels are pronounced. Uh, and certainly in modern Greek, they are pronounced differently. And so just understand that this is just Erasmian or standard pronunciation. And uh, some people disagree with that, but there's some advantages to this, so that's why I use it. Anyway, there's the first part of the alphabet. We start down the next column because we have three letters that are different, or at least out of order, uh, compared to the English alphabet. You get the Z sound, which is zeta, so like the Z in days, zeta. And then you have eta, it's a long vowel, it's like the E in obey, so it's the A sound, a long A, eta. And then you get the first of the double consonants, the TH sound, and it's called a theta, so it's pronounced th like in the English thing. So when you go back to our full chart now, you say them with me, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, the new column, zeta, eta, theta. All right. So then we go back to, in a sense, paralleling English, and you get the iota, iota. Now, some iotas are pronounced short I sound, some are pronounced with a long sound, like the two eyes in intrigue, okay? And basically, you don't have to know when iota is pronounced short or when iota is pronounced long. Uh, if you're in a class or if you're listening to me, uh, we will just pronounce them one way or the other, and you'll just pick it up. Uh, there are some clues as to when the iota is long or short, whether it's an I or E sound, but um, for the most part, it's, it's, it's an I, either long or short. Okay, so iota. Then there's the K sound, the kappa. So like K is in kitchen. And then the L sound, 
as in law. It's called lambda. So iota, kappa, lambda. Then we continue down the same column. You get the M sound, which is mu. So like the M as in mother. Then the N sound is called a nu, uh, as the pronounced like the N in the word nu. Mu, nu. And then you hit this odd word. <laughs> it's at the bottom of the column. It's the sound x, x. It's called a c, and it's pronounced like the x in axiom. In other words, there's an x s sound combined. So c. So go back to our full chart and just keep going back to the beginning. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi. Now, the advantage of having this on video, of course, is that you can go back and play this over again. And so I'm not going to take the time to repeat myself too much, but you should replay this over and over again until you really get the names of the letters and their sounds in your head. Get to the next column, and we're still basically continuing in English order, so to speak. And you have the short O sound. It's called an omicron. So it's pronounced like the O in not. And then you have this character that you may have learned in math class, but it is pronounced P. It's not pronounced pi. It's pronounced P. So it's P like in the English word peach. So I don't know why uh, mathematicians call it a pi, but it's P. So the next letter is the R sound. It's the letter rho. So it's pronounced like the R in the English rod. By the way, some people tend to trill the R like you do in some other languages, but you don't trill the Greek rho. It's just an er sound. Continue down the column and you get to sigma. Now there's two values in your chart. Uh, the second form of sigma is the way sigma is written when it's the last letter in a word. And when sigma is anywhere else, it's written like the first character. So it's the same letter, uh, pronounced the same way. It's just an orthographic change. So the character on the right is when sigma is the last letter. Uh, the uh, first character is when it's anywhere else. So it's the S like in study. Continue down to the T sound. It's tau. So it's pronounced like the T in the word talk. And then the upsilon. And upsilon is, is a U sound, and it's pronounced like, if you know German, like an umlauted U, the U, you got to kind of stick your lips out a little, upsilon, upsilon. Still remember my German teacher trying to get us to stick our lips out to pronounce the German letter properly, but upsilon is, it's not an U, it's U, okay? Okay, back to the full chart. Here we go. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. Zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi, omicron, p, rho, sigma, both forms, tau, and upsilon. You'll notice, by the way, that the omicron and the upsilon are colored as well. Uh, they are both vowels. And now we get to the last column, and here you get some unusual characters for English anyway, and the first three are double consonants, and they're sounds that we have in English, but we don't have letters for them. The first one is a phi, which is the PH or F sound, so phi is pronounced like the PH in phone. The next one, I always tell students you got to swallow your spit before you say it, or you get the person's head in front of you wet. Swallow your spit, and it's a it's like a cat. It's a he, okay? He. So it's a CH sound like in the uh, uh, Scottish word loch. Loch. It's, a, it's not ch, it's ch, okay? So he. The next one is the PS, the PS sound, like in the plural form of the word lips. And then you get, if you know Revelation, you know the last letter, right? Uh, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So the last letter in the Greek alphabet is the long O sound, Omega, always pronounced O, like in the English word tone. 
So let's go back to the full chart and go through on one more time. <laughs> Students always say, well, I know the first part of the alphabet better than the last part of the alphabet. Well, then say it backwards, <laughs> however you want to do it. But you got to learn the chart and you just got to say it and say it until you get all the sounds and the names in your head, okay? So they are alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, tau, upsilon, phi, he, psi, omega. Okay, now I want you to do something. Okay, cover your eyes over, put the chart down, stop looking at the video. Same with me again, all right? Just same with me, you can do it. It's alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, xi, Omicron, P, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, He, Psi, Omega. All right. Play that over and over again until you can do it. Pay special attention to the vowels. They become very uh, important. Uh, alpha, Epsilon, Eta, Iota, Omicron, Upsilon, Omega. Uh, you really need to know which ones are the vowels. You should also learn capital letters. Uh, the Greek texts that we use today use capital letters in a few situations, like in proper names, uh, the first word in a sentence. Uh, so you do need to know them. Uh, if you uh, kind of pull out the ones that are a little awkward, most of them are pretty straightforward. Uh, if you look at the chart, you can see that gamma is going to be a little different. Uh, the eta is, looks like a capital H, theta is a little different, capital lambda is a little different, capital C is different, uh, capital upsilon looks like a Y, it's really different, and uh, the double consonants at the end. But anyway, make sure you go through and you learn those uh, capitals as well.